Bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Um, Wednesday night I read, I read from uh, John chapter 1 that referred to the fact that Jesus was always the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. We need to know this, that Jesus was always, today we're looking at everlasting, the everlasting Father, right? In Isaiah 9 where it talks about as we looked at the first week, Wonderful Counselor. <laughs> Last week we looked at Mighty God. And today we're going to look at Everlasting Father. It means a couple things to us. One of which is that we, through Christ Jesus, have eternal life. It also means that He is always with us. He always has been and always will. He's the everlasting Father. We're going to look at a couple things that are important for us to know this Christmas. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again, Father, I thank you for your presence here with us, Lord. We know that the Holy Spirit guides us, speaks to our hearts and our minds, so that we might understand not only the written word, Father, but what you have for us, what it means to us, each. Through the Holy Spirit, we know how to apply your will to our lives. Help us, Father, this morning, this Christmas Eve, Lord, help us to apply your will to our lives. First and foremost, Father, I pray that as you speak to us, for those that have yet to come into a relationship with you, that you speak clearly to them this morning so that they might be able to receive maybe for the first time this in their lives, Lord, this year, they will know what the true gift is from you, which is your Son, Christ Jesus. Speak to me, Lord. Father, make sure that the words that come out of my mouth, Lord, are, are yours, not mine. Help us all, Father. Because you will speak to us. Give us the courage. For you are the mighty God. You are the wonderful counselor that gives us instruction. You are the mighty God that gives us the courage to follow your will for our lives. And you will always be with us. Call us so that one day we might be at home with you. Help us, Lord, this morning to make decisions, to get in line with your will, to stay within your will, and to carry it through to completion. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everlasting Father. Well, we've been looking at this again for the past, oh, this will be four weeks total, as to why Christ came. Why did he have to come? It tells us here, again in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, your attitude should be the same that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not condemn and cling to his rights as God. He made himself nothing. He took on the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. And in human form, he obediently humbled himself even further by dying a criminal's death on a cross. And I think it's important if I go back and we look at this word, humble. He humbled himself. And though he was God, he came to us, and he lived, and he made decisions. He made hard decisions, 
as we have to make hard decisions. And in those decisions, he trusted his father as we have to trust our father, God. Some of the things that we have to do, some of the changes that we have to make in life aren't easy. It always makes me scratch my head, even in my own life when I look back and see where I was and try to figure out why was it so hard for me to make a decision to finally submit myself fully to God. If we look at our past, I can sit there and I can think about Christmases. I mean, am I the only one? I mean, it was like, you know, I usually see this in a movie or a TV show or something where I was the one that knocked the Christmas tree over and fell into it because I was stone drunk. Okay? I was that person. I was that person on some Christmases that I was, I was just so ashamed of myself that I couldn't even go to visit my parents and I just wandered the streets. Am I alone? We've been there, each and every one of us know what it's like to live those Christmases, to live those Thanksgivings, to live those holidays where we were so ashamed, we wandered the streets. Why is it so hard then for us to humble ourselves before God and accept His will for our lives? Especially when we know the promises that we have in God. We have the wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God that will give us the strength to overcome every obstacle. And He's the everlasting Father. And not only is He there always for us, He always has been and always will, we have an opportunity to receive the gift of Christ Jesus so that we then might have eternal life with Him. He came, He lived, He preached, He healed, He died for all of us. All of us. And one of the benefits we gain by accepting that it came for us is that we can have everlasting life with Him in heaven. The ultimate gift we receive is the promise of eternal life with God in heaven. And know this, and we touched on this, and I'll touch on it again. Eternity is for everyone. We have to make a decision on where we spend that eternity. You hear me? Those that accept the gift of Christ will live with Him through eternity. Through eternity. Our responsive reading. Probably see it better from here. And I assure you that the time is coming. In fact, it is here when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. We make a, a decision to hear God's voice, hear His Word, and be obedient by applying it to our lives. The Father has life in Himself, and he has granted his son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge all mankind because he is the son of man. So don't be surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's son and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to eternal life. And it doesn't mean those who help a little old lady across the street. Those who have made a decision to follow God's will for their lives. You hear me? Those who make a decision that every morning when they get up, they pray to God, they ask for help, and then they make a decision throughout their day to try their best to be that who God created you to be. And who is that? Well, we have an example, and we celebrate His birth tomorrow morning. We have an example to follow in Christ Jesus. So God's will for us then to do good would be to do the best we can to be like Jesus on a regular basis. It's going to come up short. But that's where our heart needs to be. Our heart needs to be striving to be like Jesus. 
He came. He lived. He breathed. He taught. He healed. He cared. Those who have done good will rise to eternal life, and those who have continued in evil will rise to judgment. But I do nothing without counsel and consulting my Father. I judge as I am told, and my judgment is absolute and just. Because it is according to the will of God who sent me, it is not merely my own. Christ came so that we can be saved from death, just as he overcame the grave. 2 Timothy 1.10 and now he has made all of this plain to us by appearing, by the, by the appearing of Christ Jesus our Savior. He broke the power of death and illuminated the way to life and immortality through the good news. Plain, we need it plain. I mean, plain doesn't necessarily mean simple because we still have temptations. But we can overcome them. It's plain. Here's the good news. There was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. One night, he went to Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with him. I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can a grown man be born again? He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I am telling you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but is born spiritually of the spirit. Do not be surprised, because I tell you that you must all be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. It is like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? You are a great teacher in Israel, and you don't know this. I am telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we have seen. Yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me then when I tell you about the things of heaven? And no one has ever gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its savior. Those who believe in the Son are not judged. But those who do not believe have already been judged because they have not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. Those who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light because they do not want their evil deed to be shown up. But those who do what is true come to the light in order that the light may show that what they did was in obedience to God.
still enjoy living in the darkness? Right. So we, we know the difference between the light and the dark, right? We know the difference between actively participating in sin and not with, with no concern and those that are trying to do right what God would have them to do. See, there's a difference. We, we know what it's like to do whatever we want to do, even though we know deep down in our hearts that it's wrong. But where are our hearts at? Our hearts at a place where when we recognize wrong for what it is, we at least ask God for help to overcome that temptation. Because it's God that's shedding light on that so that we might see it for what it is. Or are we just laughing it off and continuing to act out? Again, eternity is real. We get to choose. He came to us, lived with us, and then died for us. John 3.13, as we heard, No one has ever gone to heaven in return, but the Son of Man, has come down from heaven. Christ has come to us. He lived here with, maybe not us physically, but with those that were there at the time. He came from and brought us and went, or came to us, brought to us, and then went back <coughs> so that we might have him in heaven. God does all this because He loves us. We recognize on Christmas each year this gift that was given to mankind, to all humanity, that is available to all people, including us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that so that the whosoever, right, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Everyone who believes. God did not send His Son. God doesn't want bad for us. He wants good for us. He doesn't want to condemn us to a life of sin and death, eternity in hell. He wants for us to come to Him. So He sent us His Son, Christ Jesus. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. That's the gift that we receive. Salvation. We are. You are whosoever when you believe when you accept this as truth oh. eternal everlasting life is yours when you believe that is the ultimate gift that not only is that available, but everything that we need in this world to reach that is available to us. We have the counsel. We have the strength. It's always there for us. It doesn't take a phone call. <clears throat> we don't have to worry if our sponsor's going to answer the phone. Or if the guys that we are support group at a meeting are all going to be there so we can go and talk to them about what we're dealing with. All of that is good. But God is always. He's everlasting. And He's always. And He wants us to always be with Him. Here and there.
that's kind of small, so I'm going to read it from here. These are what I want you to remember this Christmas. Christ came here for our benefit. He is our gift, each and every one of us. Again, John 3.13. For, for only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. He did this to save us from death, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that, the, that everyone, the whosoever believes in him, will not perish but have eternal life. Without this gift, we are separated, and we need to know this. Because we can have either eternal life or eternal death. Galatians 6, 8. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful desires will harvest the consequences of decay and death. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. And again, 2 Timothy 1, 10. There is good news for us this Christmas. And now he has made all of this plain to us by the coming of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who broke the power of death, who broke the power of us giving in to temptation, who broke the power of us being condemned because of our sin. <laughs> broke the power of death and showed us the way to everlasting life through the good news. And Christ is that good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There is nothing more than you that you can receive in this world there is nothing greater for anyone, the whosoever, the everyone of this world. There is nothing greater for you to receive than Christ Jesus. That's what Christmas is. It's sad that I have to, yesterday, anybody ever watch Charlie Brown Christmas? I'll play it for you tomorrow because Linus is the only one that truly understands. That Christ, right, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. That it is possible for each and every one of us this Christmas, today, to accept this gift. We need a wonderful counselor. The counsel of this world will have us go on astray. We need a mighty God. There is no strength within us that will make it possible for us to overcome the sin around us. We need an everlasting Father who is with us always. Because we need constant, right? A constant conscious contact with God. Praying only for the knowledge of His will for my life and the power to carry it out. Well, I always add constant to the 11th step because it's important. Because we deal with it all the time. I'm going to pray. I'm also going to read the sinner's prayer, the, the prayer of salvation. I like this version of it because this is Billy Graham. Billy Graham wrote this. I think this is the, the, the ultimate gift for mankind. And it's available. And if you have yet to accept this gift, what better time than during Christmas? So repeat after me if you believe with your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and invite you to come into my heart and life. 
I want to trust and follow. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray. I pray, Lord, that our hearts, as we read those words that we completely understand what they mean to us, it's the greatest gift of all mankind that you, our Creator, the Creator of all things, Lord, created us in a way that we might come to you. You've given us instruction throughout time, Lord, and we have read, Lord, throughout history that man has failed to follow. So you gave us your Son, Christ Jesus, so that your Word might live in our hearts through your Holy Spirit, that we might know your Word, your will for our lives, Lord, in our hearts. <clears throat> you made that possible through Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for those that have recited this prayer this morning, Father. I pray, Lord, that they, they understand its power and they know it is true. I pray, Father, the sins that we so actively participated in without concern, Lord, <laughs> you will shed light on those things so that we might see them for what they are, Lord. We've been in the darkness for so long that we couldn't even recognize. Help us to see what is wrong, Lord, so that we might make a decision to put it behind us. And I thank you, Lord, that you've made that possible through Christ Jesus, through your Holy Spirit, through your Word. We can learn. Give us counsel also made it possible, Lord, because we can know it's, it's simple for us to see wrong and make a decision, but it's hard for us to follow that decision, to, to stand firm, to say, I'm not going to do that again, Lord, give us the courage it's going to take, fighting with our own selves, let alone those around us that wonder why we've changed, give us the strength, Lord. You are the mighty God. And I thank you, Father, that this information and this strength is constant. As you speak to us now, Lord, there might be things that we still, Father, even though you shed light, we have seen that they're wrong for us, Father. And I pray, Lord, because there is no peace when we're still fighting with these things, Lord. So give us the strength to lay them at your feet.